It is ice, ice cold here in the UK. It's finally begun to snow, so I'm going to pad myself with two jumpers and hopefully it will work out. I've never done the two hoodie and a hat style before, but let's see if it pulls it off. So, if there was one piece of advice that I could give my 19 young, younger self, it is to never ever tell anyone your intentions or motives unless you actually have to. Because more often than not, it's either going to lead to nothing happening or it actually getting worse. Now, what do I mean by this? This really became clear to me when I was doing and embarking on stuff like no fat poor arrows, doing something that was sort of against the grain and something that people didn't really understand. It's really tempting, isn't it? When you finally get with something that you have a lot of progress in and you wanna share the information with people, it's very, very tempting to try and tell people the good news that you've found something that's very good and you think that it will help other people or maybe you just want some encouragement or some support for what you're doing because it's new and you 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 don't know you know you just you, you're just naive so what do you do you, you you tell people and um it doesn't always go well in most cases whenever you tell people about something that they haven't heard of or that involves change they tend to react either impassively or negatively, especially when it's about something that they are also doing. You see, no one likes it when you advocate or discuss a lifestyle that is outside of their, not only consciousness, but outside of their control to change that they're also involved in. Like with no fat, for example, just imagine if you, you go out to the pub with your friends and you've been drinking with the same group of friends and then all of a sudden you say, I'm going to go sober. You know, just imagine how that turns out. Now, the exact same thing happens when you tell people about no fat. But this isn't just about no fat. This is a broad message and I want it to be understood from various different times is that most of the time when you tell people your plans, unless they are emotionally mature, they will end up in some way bleeding negativity onto you because of it. And that's for multiple reasons. One is that one, people don't like change, especially when that change involves you doing something that they cannot do yet they knew that they should do themselves, like quitting some habit. No one wants to hear that. No one wants to hear the fact that, oh, you know, I, I've quit smoking and I've, I, I've been doing so well. No smokers anyway, no, no smokers that I knew. They don't want to hear that. Hell, I've even stopped talking to an old friend of mine. He stopped talking to me since because I basically told him like, I'm, I'm more focused on quitting my nicotine habit and he hasn't talked to me since. So it's very, very common for people when they, when you really want to help them or you really want to spread some information for them to really just crap all over your day. And if you're not careful, if you keep opening yourself up and telling people your plans and telling people your aspirations and telling people your goals, what's going to happen is you will have your self-esteem and confidence slowly leached out of you. Unless you talk to the right people, this isn't everyone. This is more often than not, the majority of the time, it's best to keep your plans to themselves. Because let's face it, if you came up with an epically awesome idea and you wanted to share it with people and it was really, really great and it was revolutionary and it would change the times, do you honestly think other people want to hear about it? Because if it was so great and they could understand, why aren't they doing it? They, 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 they're not going to understand. Oh, you want to invent some new system. Oh, they're going to be like, okay, yeah, sure, go ahead. That's fine, yeah, whatever. But they're not, it's going to be hard for them again, unless they're not very emotional, unless they're, they have a level of emotional maturity. There's, it's very hard for them to give you the kind of encouragement or the kind of interest that you, one is looking for when one is trying to share said knowledge, whether it's embarking on some sort of a new, a new project or is embarking on a new career choice. Career choice is a big one, a big one, a big one. Because what you'll find is that people like you where you are. You'll find that partners will often keep their other sides in check because they didn't want them to become too financially dependent or too fit or too healthy because what's going to happen? They might leave me. Or maybe your family wants you to stay in the same career path because they have aspirations for you to take over the business. So you better stay in that. So if you have plans at all, any to the contrary, they are going to try and sabotage you. No one, but no one, and I've said this again, no one 
wants you to change. This is why the journey of self-improvement is so personal and how you really, really can't rely on that many people. There's really, you have to, like, it's interesting. The, the, the people that I know that are on a very, very deep and very, very personal, personal development journey say that they have only about two or three very close friends. And it's true. They have about two or three very close friends. Sometimes they just have one. And what you'll find is that those close friends are people who they can literally walk up to and they can say whatever the hell they want and the other person can either totally empathize or they're on the same journey as them. The vast majority of people who claim to be friends are party friends. They're the kind of people who will be like, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's great, yeah. And then when your back is turned, like, oh, he's there, he goes again, off on that random strange thing that he's doing. Those kind of people are not friends, they're acquaintances. And it's unfortunate that as we grow up, we tend to accumulate more acquaintances than we know, and especially with the age of Facebook friends, not friends, we tend to have a lot of um, acquaintances than we do friends. And this usually ends up in us in a friend circle of people who honestly don't want the best for us. That is to say, they want the best for the group, they want the best for their relationship to you. But ultimately, and this isn't their fault because they don't know what's best for you, you know what's best for you. Ultimately, when you do embark on that path of trying to accomplish and go forward to do what's best for you, what happens? No, stop, 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 hold back, hold back, hold back. No, 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 no. He's going too far off the deep end. He's going, oh, he's changing, oh, he's not, yeah, he's not. And this is very prevalent. You'll see this more often in women as well because women will, they have a way of tearing each other down whereby if one of them in the group starts to lose weight and, you know, is trying on a dress that's a few sizes, you know, smaller than, small, smaller than usual, what will happen is some of the women in the group will say, oh, that, 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 that dress looks bad on you. Oh, you shouldn't buy that. I'll buy this. And it's like a few sizes larger or... Or maybe they'll be like, oh, you know, don't go for him. He won't, he won't like it. But actually, she's just jealous that he's into you. They don't want you to get with him because that will show that that the person, that that the guy is more attracted to her. And obviously, that will that'll devalue that woman's self-confidence. So they don't try and tear you down. This is a lot more prevalent with, with women. But just in a, in a broader sense, if you if you look at all the great pioneers and inventors, a lot of them are just like, they just locked themselves in their garage until something was done. <laughs> they just locked themselves in their, in, their, in their house, in their garage, in their room, and just worked on the project, and all of a sudden, bam, you've got fucking Minecraft, billionaire. Bam, you've got, you've, got, you've got Microsoft. Bam, you've got Apple. Sometimes people hear about it, but a lot of them are just like, I'm focused on what I'm doing, and you'll find out when you see me in the papers. And that is the attitude I think a lot of people have to have when it comes to their own, to their own personal development, is that, I'm, this is personal and you're only going to hear about it when you see me in the headlines. If we were to have that attitude, I think a lot of us wouldn't fall for a lot of the self-sabotage tricks. A lot of us wouldn't allow ourselves to be taken over by the negative press and all of the bad, oh, you know, oh, you shouldn't be doing that, oh, you know, peer pressured out of it. Because there have been times I have to admit in the past when I myself have been peer pressured into doing things that I did not want to do. And luckily, I managed to get to the point whereby it's like, look, I'm used to everyone opposing me. I had everyone opposing almost everything that I wanted to do for myself and by myself. I had, a, a, my whole life was just a, a roller coaster from, it was, it was crazy, but it was on a track and it was on a path and no one wanted me to stray away from that. And all of my decisions that have, the best decisions I've, I've ever made were in spite of almost everyone's advice. And because of that, I'm still alive today. So that's the message. Don't tell people what you are going to do. Don't tell people your plans unless you trust them and you know that they can either empathize or help you. Anyway, that's what I was say. Oh, especially if you're a Trump supporter. Don't tell people that you can do politics. Free them out and peace.